We already know that when we're running video campaigns within Google Ads, the main action a user can take is to watch your video. Pretty straightforward. But besides interacting with your videos, there are several other ways users can engage with your video ads. We can add ad extensions to a variety of different video ad formats to encourage the users to engage in a few different ways, whether it's driving more traffic to your website, watching other videos, and a few other ones. So in this video, we will talk about the ad extensions you can attach to your video ads and which campaign objectives you will have to select if you want to use the specific ad extension. The first optional element I'm going to go over has been around for a while and it is probably the most common form of extension or addition that is attached to a video ad. And that is going to be the call to action button or overlay. I just have one example of an in-stream ad. You can see it says skippable in-stream ad, but you will be able to add this to non-skippable in-stream ads as well and even your bumper ads. So pretty much whichever objective and campaign subtype allows these in-stream ads, you will be able to add the call to action button. I already have the final URL and display URL in place, but you can see we get 10 characters for a call to action, which is going to be the blue button in the preview. If you click within the field, they will have some generic options that you could use, but you can also type in your own custom option. For the headline, we get 15 characters. By default, it's pulling in the name of our YouTube channel but you can replace it to be whatever you want within the 15 characters. Now in the preview here, we see what it could look like on a mobile device. Now we've noticed that these things are a lot smaller on desktop devices. And next we can look at TV devices. Now we've noticed in our accounts for the vast majority of TV devices, call to action overlays don't show a lot, but they still can show up on TV devices. It's just that the user who is watching the ad has to be signed into YouTube on the TV app. If they are, they could see the call to action overlay. If they use the TV remote or whatever device to click on this notification, they can have the website sent to their mobile browsing device. Here's another important call out. The call to action button for TV devices is only available if you are using the objectives of brand awareness and reach or product and brand consideration. So if you're not, and you have one of the video action campaign objectives, you may want to consider turning off TV devices if you really want to focus on getting users to take an additional action besides watching your video. It's totally up to you. Another form of action that is pretty simple is going to be the companion banner. For the most part, we leave it to auto-generate, but you can upload your own image. And if you're not familiar with what companion banners are, let's go to YouTube and look at an example. So here's one ad I have paused. We do see the call to action button right here. It will go away after a few seconds, and then all that'll be shown will just be this little link. Notice that the call to action button is gonna be the exact same thing on the right-hand side. Exact headline, exact call to action button, you can't separate the two. But right above this call to action button, there you see the companion banner. It's just that little rectangle image. So you do have the option to control what message this image says. If you do choose to upload it, there are the dimensions, 300, by 60 pixels, and there's the maximum file size. The companion banner is also available for the skippable and non-skippable in-stream ads, as well as your six second bumper ads. They will only show up on desktop devices. No mobile, no TV. If someone does click on it, it will go to the website URL that you provided earlier within the campaign. And any click on a companion banner or call to action buttons will count as a view. So if you're running skippable in-stream ads, Hopefully you know by now that the advertiser only pays if the user watches at least 30 seconds or the entire video. However, if they do click on any of those elements, that'll count as a view and the advertiser will still be charged as a view. So these two are probably the most common additional action elements that you can attach to your video ad. And as we saw with the companion banner, it was originally left to auto-generate, so you don't have to do anything. Just leave it as is and it'll pull the image from your YouTube channel banner. But let's talk about more specific assets or extensions where you can drive even more action from your video ads. The next few assets that we're going to talk about are going to be available for video action campaigns. Video action campaigns are considered any of the campaign objectives that include either sales, leads, or website traffic. So the next asset I want to talk about will be site link assets. It's the same type of principle of when you're using site links for your search ads. We've been able to add them to video campaigns for years already. And site link assets are available for any of the three video action objectives. So I'm just gonna continue with website traffic, choose your proper conversion actions and click continue. And of course we want video. 
So let's click continue again. Scrolling down a little bit, we will get to the section for our site links. If I click on this to open it, there's a couple things we want to know. First, these are campaign level site links. Even if you do have account level site links added, those will not work. For YouTube campaigns, you do have to do everything at the campaign level, at least of right now. Another thing I wanna call out that's not showing up on the screen is that for video campaigns, site links are only going to show before, during, or after videos on mobile devices. So make sure when you're reviewing site link performance, it's in comparison to the amount of impressions you may be getting from mobile devices. No desktop, no TV. Looking at the blue box on the screen right now, you have to add at least two site links. If you don't add at least two, then no site links will appear alongside your video ad. But you can show up to four. So go ahead and add as many site links as you want. And since we know these will appear on mobile devices, we highly recommend that you create some mobile specific site links just for your YouTube campaigns. And we say this because yes, you may have a specific mobile URL. That's one reason. But another reason is that we try to keep the text within our mobile site links a lot shorter. One, so we can try to get as many as possible showing up, but also to get straight to the point for people on mobile devices. So let me just add a bunch here. If we look at preview, we get to see how these could appear right underneath the call to action overlay button. And scrolling down, it's giving us up to four. I'm gonna click off of this. I'm gonna open up networks really quick because this is applicable to site link assets. One of the newer settings changes for video action campaigns is that advertisers are no longer able to turn off video partners. I mention this because your site link assets will not show up on video partners. It's only gonna show up on placements on YouTube or the YouTube app. So that's another reason why you may not see your site link extension show up depending on how many impressions you're getting. No desktop, no TV, no video partners. And just like your other site link extensions you may be using in different campaign types, if I wanna edit this site link to asset, it will change it for any other video campaign or any other campaign period that is also using the site link asset. So in other cases, you may just need to create a new one. Let's talk about another extension that we can add to a video action campaign. And for this next one, we're gonna focus on looking at the sales objective. So this is going to be for the e-commerce accounts out there and any account that may be running shopping campaigns already. So we selected the sales objective, again, part of the video action campaign family. Choose your conversion goals and we'll click continue. Of course, we want video, click continue again. And if we scroll down right underneath the site link assets, we see a different option here because with the sales campaign objective, we can now tie in a product feed from Merchant Center to show product cards alongside your video ad. Now it's odd how they set this up. So yes, we wanna use a Google Merchant Center feed. You can't see it right here, but this account only has one feed attached to it. Doesn't have a lot of products or SKUs, so that's what I have blurred out right above my mouse. But then they separate it. So if we go down to the part where we start creating our ad group, there's the product filter for this specific ad group. But notice how the feed section was up above in the main campaign settings. So you can only attach one feed at the campaign level. If you wanna run the same type of shopping video campaign for a variety of different feeds, each of those feeds will need its own campaign. But if I open up the product filter for this specific ad group, we see that it defaults to all products. But if you want, you can choose specific products. Scrolling down a little bit, we see if I'm handpicking products, Google's letting us know you need to have at least four products. That is because while your video ad is playing, a minimum of four product images pulled from your feed can be displayed right below your video ad. So then users will be able to click on those product cards and go directly to the product page on your website or whatever URLs you have within your feed. And all of the products still need to comply with the same policies that you use within your regular shopping ads. So in this case, you can search by a specific title, URL, or product ID. If your feed is using labels within the custom label column, you just need to let Google know which custom label column to look at and then enter in the value of the label. Notice that we can only select one custom label column at a time. This is where feed organization can be crucial. If this Black Friday label is in a few different custom label columns, it's only gonna pull from the one column. And then you'd have to create another ad group pulling from the other custom label column. So it can be more work if your feed is a little messy. But if I pull up this example, and I have to show you this because I can't show you the actual client account with client products, 
I'd have to just blur out the preview anyway. Here's showing how the products could appear underneath the video ad. You see if the user keeps scrolling, they'll see product cards. There is a generic shop now button. That's the main call to action button. But each of those individual squares is a product image pulled from your feed, giving the users the opportunity to go shopping. So besides the product feed within the campaign settings and then your individual product filter from your ad groups, you would just go ahead and create your video ads as normal and then launch the campaign. Once this feature was added to video action campaigns, I did create a video about this new process formerly known as TrueView for Shopping. So you can check out this video here and still get an understanding of how it could look and potentially some strategies to use. But now let's check out a different extension. And this time it's going to be for lead gen focused campaigns, still part of the video action campaign family. If you choose the leads campaign objective, scrolling down past the conversions, yes, we want video, click continue. I don't even have to scroll down to look at this particular asset. I know I keep calling them extensions, it's going to be a tough habit to break but the lead form asset has also been around for a while that you can attach to your lead focus video campaigns you can click to add a lead form understand this is done at the campaign level so similar to what i said earlier about account level extensions any account level lead form extensions will not be applied to your youtube campaigns you will have to add lead form assets to any lead objective campaign that you create so because this is a client account, I have the two lead form assets that they already have set up blurred out. But if we look at creating a new one, you can add in your headline, pull in your business name, a description, AKA the offer, try to entice users about why they should fill out a form, why they should give you their information. But there are a variety of fields that you can add. Scrolling down a little bit, there's even a variety of qualifying questions, all broken out by specific industries. If we look at insurance, when do you need insurance? What type of insurance you need? Those sort of things. And then if we go to the submission message preview, after a user fills out the form, what message do you want to show them afterwards? Setting up the proper expectations and then giving them the opportunity to visit your website, go to a confirmation page to download something, whatever your offer may be. I do walk through a full lead form asset setup right here. You can check out this video. But for video campaigns specifically, there are a few rules in order for you to be able to use these. First is that your Google Ads account must have a minimum of 50,000 United States dollars in total spent. So that's why I had to pull open a client account because we don't really spend much within our demo account and we are nowhere near 50 grand lifetime spent. So this feature is not available within our own demo account. You may have noticed earlier when we were setting up the ad, you will need to have a visible privacy policy URL. And that's not just for video campaigns, that's for all lead forms. So if you do not have one on your site, which is crazy nowadays, you're not gonna be able to use lead forms for your video campaigns. And next, if I go to preview and click desktop, just for video campaigns, lead forms will only show on mobile and tablet devices. Not only that, and what they don't show you on the screen right now, is that they only show up on Android mobile and tablet devices. No iPhones, no iPads, and of course, no TV as well. So if you are focused on trying to get lead form completions from your YouTube campaigns, this is when you may want to go to the advanced device section within your campaign settings and start turning off certain operating systems. But then within your campaign settings, you'll be able to look at any leads that may have come from these ads. Or if you use a tool like HubSpot and you've connected HubSpot within the Google ads, any lead form submissions from your video campaigns should be automatically imported directly back into your CRM. And there's a variety of different CRMs you can't connect just check out the linked account section within Google Ads. And the last asset or extension I wanna talk about is related video extensions. And it's either gonna be in product and brand consideration, brand awareness and reach, or if you decide to create a campaign without a goals guidance. Getting users to engage with more video content instead of necessarily really focused on getting a sale or a lead right away. That is exactly why it lives in mostly more of the brand awareness type objectives. You're focused on attention and engagement. So because of that, I'll choose brand awareness and reach. Keep it to video. I'll leave the subtypes as is and I'll click continue. Within the settings, you can scroll down and here you will see related videos. Now keep in mind, these are supposed to be in addition to the main video ad you are already showing the user. This is not where you want to include the URL for the main video ad. We see in the preview here, this is where your video ad will be but then the user will have the option to click on other videos related to it. And potentially you're distracting that user from watching the original video they intended on watching. And now you're just getting them to engage with your brand for even longer. So let's say the video ad is a presentation I did about YouTube. 
while they're watching the presentation, I know it's crazy to use a super long video as an in-stream ad, but you get it. But as I was starting to say, as they're watching the main video ad, there we see links for other related videos next to it. And I'm keeping these related videos on topic. If the presentation is about me talking about YouTube ads, maybe I wanna put certain components of specific videos related to the content I talked about within that video underneath it. If they're interested in watching the main video ad, they could also be interested in other additional videos related to the same content. I added the minimum two that we see right here, but you can add up to five. A few nuances with the videos that you are adding. If you go back into YouTube Studio and you make any changes to the title of a video, that video will stop running. You will have to come back in, remove it, and then re-add it to your related video settings. If it's a thumbnail or a description change, Google reviews those automatically and you should be good to go. Any changes made to these related videos will not affect your main video ad from running. And then not to get confused with the difference in views, you can segment performance and metrics by the click type. If you segment by click type, you will see a separate row just for related videos views compared to your main overall video ad view. So you can see if people are actually staying and watching your related videos. And then one last thing, if I go back up to the desktop preview, another asset that is only available for mobile devices. So we have seen with all the options that I've talked about that mobile really benefits from all these video extensions or assets that you can attach to your video campaigns. And those are the options I have for you right now. I talk about a variety of these in depth besides the ones I already mentioned in our YouTube playlist. So you can go down the line right in this link here. But to me, they're just as important as adding assets to your search campaigns. We want to encourage additional engagement, especially for how affordable YouTube ads can be. And depending on which assets you're using, see if people are clicking on your site links. Are they clicking on your product cards? Are they eventually buying or converting on their site after clicking on these elements, especially the call to action overlay? And just like search campaigns, we like to test out different assets. Video is definitely gonna have the biggest impact in testing different creative, but can we increase our engagement rates or our click-through rates by testing out different assets? Really depends on what objective you're using and the goals of your campaigns. But if you have any other questions about extensions or assets that we can add to our video campaigns, please let us know in the comments below. Thanks for watching our video. We really appreciate it. If you liked it, give us a thumbs up below. If you really liked it, maybe think about subscribing to the Paid Media Pros YouTube channel and you'll get alerted every time a new video drops. If you really, really liked it, you can help support the channel by checking out some of the t-shirts that we're wearing on our merch shelf, as well as looking at the Super Thanks button.